Hey guys, we're gonna check a game that was was played in a TV show in 2016. I think that it was quite an extraordinary event in the sense that it was a three-year-old kid who played uh, none other than Anatoly Karpov. Okay, so the the kid is called uh, Misha Osipov, and you know, well, three-year-old playing chess is already a, a child prodigy. And uh, whether he makes it far or not in his chess career, I think it's pretty, already pretty amazing to have someone at this age playing a game of chess. And as we'll see, he he does know quite a lot about chess. And regardless of the quality of the game that we'll analyze, you know, we need to highlight that, uh, as we see in the picture, it was a, a kid just you know playing in front of a, of a legend. And also, it was not in a in a quiet match, so it was in a TV show, in a Russian TV show. So um, I'm pretty sure that any of us in that situation would be very nervous and even probably making very bad moves. So that's why I think it's quite uh, quite amazing to see this this happening. Also, another thing that I want to highlight, you know, uh, how chess really u unifies, you know, uh, all of us, you know, no matter the, the religion, no matter your your age your political view, you can play a game of chess with another person. So th that's something that I, I really like about chess. That kind of, you know, made me play more and more chess so that I can meet people from all around the, the world, no matter the the age or, the, or, or, or his views. So let's get uh, to the game. So I, I will share you the, the link of uh, this video where Karpov plays against Osipov, so basically the kid got to the TV show and uh, the the conductor uh, asked him if, if he wanted to play a game of chess uh, Osipov said yes and he said that he didn't know how to how to play a game of chess so they had an, someone who invited, someone who he, he might know and this kid you know, was, was very happy to see to see Karpov he already knew that he played against Korchnoi in the in the world championship matches so he he already impressed Karpov who was very happy to see this kid so uh, he also Osipov also picked up the color so he played uh, as white the move d4 and Karpov actually he played a very good game he didn't you know give anything for free in this game he played the the Nimzo Indian this is a very common reply against the, the Queen's uh, Gambit. One of the ideas is that uh, Black wants to take here sometimes to destroy the pawn structure to play against these C pawns, and also he's fighting against you know the control of of E4. So he might either do this by playing the move D5 or indirectly by playing the move bishop to b4 and here Osipov, uh, by the way here uh, Karpov asked Osipov if he knew the opening and he, to he told him that it's the Nimzo Indian so it's a three-year-old kid who already knows how to or already knows a lot about openings so th also that's quite amazing and here he played the move a3 Osipov which is not the most popular move not a bad move but not the most popular move so here normally as we check in other lessons, you know, White sometimes wants to play against the opponent's pl plan. A move like Queen C2 is interesting to take with the with the Queen, keeping the pawn structure. Also, a move like E3, or also a move like Knight to F3, are more popular because the point is that Black might end up taking on C3 anyways, and if you play A3. There are some cons on these moves. For example, the bishop cannot go to the a3 square after after taking on c3. So um, the move a3 doesn't, you know, uh, improve White's position. So it's it's not a bad move, but it's not a critical move. So 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 here, Karpov took on c3 it makes sense. That's why he played bishop before. After taking on 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 c3, here Karpov played the move c5, already aggressive. So as as we as I told you, Karpov is really here playing for a win, even though he's playing against a kid. Uh, although he was very friendly during the match, he here he was playing for a, for a win. For instance, he would have played something like castles, which is more more 
quiet but c5 is already kind of uh, aggressive attack in the center and uh, well here white black has some ideas sometimes like to play like b6 bishop to a6 knight c6 knight to a5 and this pawn might become a target also c5 is, a, is attacking the, the center and um, Therefore, it, it makes more sense to control the center, to, to keep the center with a move like e3, already defending c4. Or maybe playing a move like f3, just trying to gain control of the center. So here, Osipov played the move d takes e5, which is uh, probably a bit weaker, because it weakens the pawn structure, as we see. Uh, white is a pawn up, but um, this pawn on c5 will most, most likely fall and uh, white will end up with these pawns on c4 and c3 which are uh, very which could be very weak particularly if, if we take into account that uh, the c5 is open so here Karbov attacked the pawn with knight to a6 uh, and here um, Osipo play bishop to g5 so in a way it makes sense I'm just trying to understand the moves of a kid you know Normally, kids they play very direct, very attacking moves. So here, the bishop g5 is pinning the, the knight, uh, and here uh, it was more interesting to play queen d4. Actually, trying to keep the center. And for instance, if um, so, probably Osipov saw the move queen d4, but after queen a5, there was this nice follow-up, which is rook to b1. And if you take on c5, then here rook b5 is quite quite interesting actually. Because uh, if black takes, then white gets the you know the the pawn structure back. So also we need to take into account that uh, here white uh, also has the bishop pair, that as we know in in an open position might be an advantage for white. So here taking d4 would be good for white. So after uh, bishop g5 take taking on c5, uh, black is fine. So as as I said here, black is at. Uh, Black wants to play against these pawns, but uh, on the other hand, White so far has the bishop pair, so this is kind of his uh, uh, advantage against uh, Black's also uh, against Black's advantage. So here, uh, the position I would say slightly better for Black, but still within the balance could be within the balance. But here, White has to play more or less uh, accurately. After knight f3, b6, g3. Here, Karpov played the move h6. I think it's interesting to, you know, always ask. Uh, he's asking questions to his younger opponent. And here, uh, Osipov took on f6. You know, it, it's, it is tempting, you know, to exchange pieces when you play against a former world champion. But here, it is quite a big mistake because after, um, because after bishop takes, queen takes, basically, you know, uh, black has this advantage of ad fighting against these pawns and white has nothing in return. So after bishop f4, uh, I would say that the game, uh, although it's still a, a bit better for for black maybe, at least white has the, the bishop pair. So. so here Sipo played the move knight to d4 which is active, I mean in a way it's the active and protects c3, but here uh, Karpov counters with bishop to b7, which is attacking the rook, and bishop g2 is not possible, because we just blunder the bishop, that's why he had to play the move f3, and after castles, bishop g2, bishop a6, you know, as we said, this pawn is a weakness, and this is one of the most common ways to attack it. And uh, basically, the pawn is falling. But here, Osipov again. This is, uh, I think, he played quite uh, good moves. Also, considering his age, this is an attacking move. F4. You know, counter attacking move, attacking the rook. But Karpov played the rook on C in the C file, attacking the pawns in the future. And after castles, bishop takes f5 also another interesting move you know uh, Osipov is not uh, intimidated by Karpov and actually around around this point um, Karpov uh, told Osipov that he was uh, 
running low on time and he offered a, a draw so Karpov is clearly better here but uh, Osipov I think he has a really really good fighting spirit he rejected the draw offer and played knight to f3 but after the move d5 uh, Osipov lost on time he's already much worse he's a pawn down and like has the center so but in any case I think it was quite an, uh, an interesting game to watch and I showed the the, the, the video ab about this game, what they play live in the in the TV show. So here, uh, actually, Osipov he was a bit sad after the game. He's, he cried a little bit, but after that, he he was happy again. After uh, Karpov congratulated him, and actually, he solved some some puzzles after the game, some chess puzzles very quickly. That's also quite impressive. So uh, I invite you to check the video, and I hope that you enjoyed this this video as well. So I'll talk to you next time. Bye bye.